Right, welcome to this painting tutorial. It's for the Tyranid Prime uh, from the Leviathan boxed set for Hammer 40,000 10th edition. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to paint this model. As you can see, I've, I've made some adaptions to it here. Uh, but I'm going to show you from start to finish uh, how to paint this model up. Uh, it's using what I'm calling like the enhanced contrast method. So I'll show you this approach. Uh, you should see there should also be uh, another tutorial for the Screamer Killer. You can check that out as well. Uh, but I'm going to do a video uh, of how to paint this model as well. So the basing is pretty much done. Uh, it's in the Screamer Killer tutorial. I include a basing tutorial within that video. So if you like the basing color scheme that I'm doing uh, for my Tyranids, in fact, I can bring the model up here. So if you like that basing, then that is included in the tutorial for this model. So check that out. That video should be live. And I'll show you from start to finish all the details of how to create the basing effect that you see here will be covered uh, in that video. I'm going to use the same process uh, across the army and for this piece here. Uh, so I'm not going to cover basing in this video. Uh, we're just going to get straight into the uh, the painting method uh, here for this Tyranny Prime model. So I've lifted him up from the ground. He's like he's a, like a bird perched up high. Uh, the idea is that I'm thinking possibly running these perhaps with gargoyles. Now if they're that kind of height on the table, I want him to be head and shoulders above them, like peering out over and above uh, the gargoyles on the table. So he's quite low on his base. I wanted to lift him up a bit higher. So I found a nice appropriate rock uh, and then have... And then I've kind of done the, the rest of the basing with that. And as I said, you can check out the tutorial uh, for that with the Screamer Killer. So this method is, I think, is quick enough and it's effective. I've always loved High Fleet Leviathan. I've always held back, though, because the, the classic method looks fantastic, but it's a lot of hard work. But with contrast, it's all of a sudden created a process that can be done uh, very quickly indeed. So I'm going to run through materials that you'll need for this project. Um, so... Uh, the model itself, I build the whole model and then spray it entirely with Wraith Bone from Games Workshop. Brilliant spray, uh, fantastic stuff. Two two thin coats is what I would do with this spray. So spray it on once, let it dry, and then spray it again to give it a nice solid colour. Um, Games Workshop spray is not good if you spray them on thick. Uh, as with any spray, I suppose, but it's better when you do some thin coats. Uh, with that. When the model's finished, I'll varnish with like a nice satin varnish here. It's a Munitorum varnish from Games Workshop. Again, it's my favourite varnish at the moment. Uh, very, very nice indeed. Uh, and then for the basing, if you are going to follow my basing, I'll run through the materials that you'll need. So this brown finish that's spraying the whole base and the rim colour uh, is from Army Painter. It's leather brown from Army Painter. So uh, you can use that uh, for the basing and the base trim colour. I'll also, if you want to copy the basing, I'll mention the paints that you'll need for that. Uh, the method is covered in the other, video, uh, the other video. So, Mournfang Brown, Abaddon Black, and all these colours are explained uh, in the video. If you're going to do Ultramarines, then McCrag Blue. There's Dawnstone. Uh, for metallic work, Iron Breaker. Uh, white and a Shabti Bone for the highlighting of the sand and so on. And then for shading of the sand and also the accessories and bits on the base. It's a combination of Seraphim, Sepia and Agrax Earthshade. If you're not going to copy my basing, then don't worry about those paints, you won't need them. Then for actually painting the model itself for this High Fleet Leviathan contrast, enhanced contrast approach, uh, then the colours you'll need will be Velopus Pink. These are all contrast paints apart from one of these. Then Quite crucial, technical contrast medium. Black Templar contrast. Gilliman Flesh contrast. Gliandin yellow. You could get away with a drop of yellow paint, it's just for the eyes, so it might seem a bit silly to buy an entire pot for that. Uh, so you could just get away with a bit of thin down yellow paint, it's up to you, uh, but I've just got a hold of that uh, for this project. Purple, so there's a number of shades that you can go for. Games Workshop do a contrast Leviathan purple. It's a bit more, it pops a bit more and stands out uh, a bit more than Shyish purple, which I've got here. Shyish purple is, is what's used in the contrast method from Games Workshop. Uh, I've tried, I've bought one of each and I've tried both. I prefer Shyish purple, but it's a matter of taste. You might prefer High Fleet uh, Leviathan contrast paint. 
that's it's entirely your choice which one you want to go for the method will work whichever shade of purple you wish to use uh, but shyish purple is what i've settled on it's more of a deeper darker add uh, purple perhaps more the updated uh, color scheme fire fleet the fire from if you want something that pops a bit more and stands out uh, then go with high uh, with uh, leviathan contrast paint then you've got magos purple uh, then wraith bone paint so you've got the spray and then you've got the paints the two colors matching up and then finally flesh terrors red contrast paint as well so as you can see quite a tight number of paints contrast paints to come in a good size you're going to get pretty good coverage uh, with them and then if you were to narrow this down if you really wanted to limit your paints the magos purple i'm using for the tongues so if you didn't want to worry if you don't want to worry about doing a different shade for the tongues on the models then you could uh, take that one away and as i said about the yellow paint uh, just use that instead of island and yellow contrast you could save yourself and not get that one uh, either and you just narrow yourself down to seven paints will paint the whole model so it's nice uh, tight number of paints to use uh, for paints and accessories uh, do use the link in the video description below it's for the outpost you've got to get all your paints uh, and games workshop stuff from them at a discounted rate loads of gaming systems uh, from them and a wide range of painting and modeling stuff as well and then when you use that link it does help support the channel also uh, so that's the paints that we've gone through uh, for this project so really we're just going to get stuck straight into this here we'll take you to the first step for painting up this tyranny prime all right so what we're going to do is cover the entire model absolutely all of it uh, with velopus pink but seriously watered down with contrast mediums. So that's what we're going to do, and it's going to just shade the whole thing for us. And no matter what other color we're going to put on, we can shade the whole model with that, no problem. The only exception to that is if you're going to do this kind of turquoise color for these brains uh, and other areas that are in that color scheme, then I would leave that white uh, and not put the velopus pink on that, but keep that pure if you can. So go neatly around that and avoid that because there's other areas where these. Uh, brain things are on this uh, model just here the paints for that if you are going to copy that uh, is two contrast paints uh, so uh, a Kellyan green and then once that's on uh, it's watered down contrast medium then put it on uh, and shade the whole thing and then around the edges so in the recesses and around the edges you can shade a bit deeper and a bit further with Griff Charger Grey uh, those two Add, and then you can do like an extreme highlight on the raised parts and around the edges by taking some ceramite white and then adding a bit of the contrast a uh, green to that just to give it a tone and then just gently give that a little bit of a highlight and that's the uh, colors that you get like so but uh, i would avoid putting the blopus pink uh, on that initially so that's those colors but for this model here there's this that color's not being used at all so we'll go straight on with this so I've got two brushes here and I've got my brush that I'm going to apply onto the model just a good size it's a good length brush and it's just going to flow on quite nicely so you are going to thin this down a fair bit now you can use water and uh, I've not dared to do it yet it seems all right I've seen it done and you can take the risk but I would just go with the method that these paints have been designed for so one blob of velopus pink and then technical medium you can get it from other companies but i would stick to the brand here because we, we know you know these two have been tested together how they interact so i'm going to do seven blobs of the contrast medium i'm putting them onto this white sheet so that you can see one two three four five six and seven and then we'll give this a mix And it really does, you know, the pigment really does stretch it. This is looking quite good. This is just to show you the kind of tone that you're aiming for. If you go too strong, it's not the end of the world, you can still correct it. If you do go too strong, um, it becomes quite strongly defined. If you go soft, so a nice lot of contrast medium, you get a lovely soft sort of effect, uh, the shading, and it comes up really nice. So. That's what I would recommend. 
So this will go over the entire model. And that's going on pretty good. No, that's looking nice. So looking like that. This will shade, gently shade, and pick out all the details for you. It will act as a guide for all the other colors, contrasts that you apply. So I don't want to flood the model, but I don't want to run this too thin. I just want a nice flow of the shade going onto the model. And as you can see, it's quite quick. You're off to a flying start once you get this done. You've shaded and covered a large part of the model as soon as you start to get into this. You don't need to be neat as such, just controlling the amount of contrast going on. Huge puddles, you can just pick them up. If it's too thin, just apply a bit more. Long bristle brush, I can just work it right into the, the details. Um, it's worth stabbing and getting the working the brush right in, so you're just shading everywhere. Otherwise, there'll be bits that are missed. I don't want to stop halfway through. I just want to keep going. I want to shade this all in one go. If possible, just working way under the head and the neck. I'm just going to work my way around the entire model. It's been completely shaded. Taking my time to make sure it's fully covered. But I'll just keep going get this bit done. All right, so that's that finished. That coat's gone all the way around the model. Every nook and cranny, hopefully, has been covered. Uh, but it shaded the whole thing up very nice. I uh, let that dry completely uh, before moving on to the next stage. So that's completely dry. The next stage is to take Velopus Pink as it comes straight from the pot, so higher concentration. And you see on the arms here, you've got these little, little ribbed vent type things uh, on the forearm there, on the, the main part of the arm. We're going to fill those in. Uh, with Velopus Pink, so just paint it in, flood it in, uh, in between those cracks, so if I can do one of them, to show you, just here, it takes on a whole different quality to it here, now there's stuff, now it's going on thicker, Hopefully you can see that just being filled in there, this is, this is the beauty of this, just a, a washed out shade, uh, and then the intense colour just going in between the cracks and you're just creating such effect so quickly and effortless, effortlessly. Really good. There's another one just further up the arm. So I'll fill that in as well. Okay, so I'm just going to go around the model. There's nowhere else to put these. You'll find them on the arms. You, uh, on the outside, sometimes on the inside. Yeah, there's some on the inside of his arms there as well. Uh, it's here on the wings for this particular model. I can see a number of them running along there as well. And usually on the legs, like on the fires, just tucked in there also, I can see one uh, just in there. So go around the model and fill in all of those. Right, so that's done. Uh, you can see it on the arms there, just shading in uh, those cracks in between there. The next color is Gilliman Flesh. So that's gonna be for all the cartilage and sinew type of stuff going on. So you'll see it at the elbows, at the wrist, uh, the knee joints. I, I guess this thing's got two knees, sort of one at the back, one at the front, the way it's bent. So in between there, um, the cartilage around the ankles as well. Uh, the Anywhere there's like connecting tissue and sinew, so between the arms and the wing. Uh, here, there's some. Uh, so, and then the teeth and the mouth, but not the tongue. Uh, we'll leave that for Magos Purple. And it's those things. Now, also the the fleshy part, the membrane of the wings, but I'll come back to that because we're going to try and do a technique to match uh, the colour scheme on the box. I think we'll give it a go. I suspect we can use Gilliman Green and then a bit of Flesh Terrors Red shaded in so we'll attempt to do that but we'll come back to that one we'll just do the regular coat as of this color so yellow and flesh we'll show you a little bit of it so there's some here yeah just at the wrist this cartilage sort of in between so it's already been shaded for you lightly by the velopus pink but not that it spoils this contrast going on. Not the claws, we'll do those in Black Templar. But hopefully you can see a different shade now with the cartilage on the arms. Uh, 
any joints and connecting tissue basically. So that's about it. And there, I'm going to do the connecting tissue in between the arms with this shade. I just want to put it on neatly. All you're going to do is one coat and then leave it and we'll not come back to it, be it finished. It's the great thing about contrast paint. There's plenty of areas on this project that you can just put contrast on and then just leave it as it is. Uh, the elbow here on the wing can be shaded in with this color as well. You're starting to see the way it's forming up quite nicely. So I'll press on, do the rest of the model. All right, so that's the cartilage and sinew done. It's kind of common sense where it goes uh, just the connecting tissues, cartilage in the joints, teeth and mouth. Um, then I have experimented with the wing just to see how well it would work. That's just two contrast paints. I was wondering if I'd need more. Uh, there's no contrast medium being used of that either. So it's Gilliman flesh painted on as we've been doing uh, for the rest uh, of this color. And then some flesh tear as red, just guided in to the root of the wing just here. So that's the kind of effect that you can get. It's still drying. So I'm going to show you how to do that next. It's quite straightforward. So we'll do, we'll do this part of the wing just here. So straight from the pot with Gilliman flesh, painting neat onto the membrane of the wing, being careful not to go over these ribbed structures here. And again, the same kind of coat, sort of a generous, but not over the top amount. Painting it nice and tidy of this one. Just removing the excess flesh. And then I'm trying to work the flesh terrors red into the base here. That's its strongest point. Then coming to about here, I'm going to wash the brush out. And then going to take some more Gilliman flesh and then just start merging the two together. And that's looking fine. Yeah, happy enough for that. So if you can see it, happy enough of how that's gone. So uh, there's not much else to it, really. That's what you're doing, just flowing it in. Uh, for that effect. And again, it's just the great thing about contrast, just getting effect straight away. Shade, tone, highlight, all in there. And you're going to save yourself loads of time, get some brilliant effects with contrast. Then with the enhanced method, we're going to pick out a few bits later on just to enhance the whole model, just to lift it a little bit. Um, but that's going really well. So I'm going to continue on. I'll do the outside of the wings and also the inside of both. It's a bit more tricky with the brush, but you won't see it so much. But I'm going to try and do the insides as well get that tone down, that's a real, that's really nice the way that's come out. So happy enough, we'll just press on. All right, so hopefully you can see the detail there on the wings. It's been picked out, both sides. I've done the inside as best as I can. I've overreached it okay, so it's not too bad. Um, so just coming in from this angle, and also coming in, I can see the inside of the wing just in here. So I've been able to fill it in okay. Same process for all of that. The next step, uh, again, it's just some simple contrast, then we'll put them on and just leave them. Uh, if the tongue's dry enough and the mouth, uh, then Magos Purple onto the tongue. A good generous blob of this stuff. And just reaching into the mouth. And I'll bring that up so you can see. Just adds another colour. You don't have to do this. You do the, the tongue any colour you want. But that's what I've done uniformly across all the models so far. Just Magos Purple. That's that. That's all there is for that colour. The next bit to do is Black Templar. Again, we're going to apply this uh, without doing anything else to it. So it's going to be the hooves, uh, the spikes are coming out. The spikes are the tips of all the wings as well. Uh, leave the tail, there's nothing on the tail to do. Um, but the spikes are a lot of the junctions around here as well. So there's plenty of those. So we're just painting it on, again, a generous coat. And it will self shade, self highlight itself. So just flood that on. Painting nice and neat and tidy. If you do make a mistake, 
Uh, wash the brush out, apply water to the, the affected area qu as quickly as you can. Contrast seems to dry fast. Um, so if you make a mistake, get in there quick and remove it. If you do make a terrible mistake and you're too late to remove it, then you have to go down the route. It's not the end of the world. You can repaint uh, the area using your Rafe bone paint and then rewash and shade as appropriate. But that's the spikes done there. Uh, there's the hooves to do and again just flow this on and it will self highlight and shade for you so just one coat will do I'm just painting neat or getting on the base be careful to go around the, uh, the spikes there on the feet that's it nice and easy really building this model up here so I'll press on to the rest of that black so those are the spikes all done around there tips of the wings claws along the backs of the legs and the hooves uh, keeping the Black Templar open, but just before I forget, iron and yellow, so water down yellow, all this contrast, just dot in the eyes. One, and two, and that's it. It's not very, very significant. Just gets that done. We're actually uh, well on track to getting this model finished here. Really the main obstacle left uh, is the purple. Uh, I've also, if the Magos purple doesn't go strong enough, uh, then by all means add a second car. I've actually run some more of it into the mouth and down the tongue just to intensify that Magos purple uh, for the tongue. So you're welcome to do that. So Black Templar and then Fleshed Hair as Red. So we're going to do these menacing claws here at the front. Uh, so we're going to paint them and leave them. Just contrast. Uh, it's a similar process that I've done uh, with the Screamer Killer. If I bring this on, you can see... Uh, the job on these see that across there that's just black templar and the tips then mixed uh, and, and faded in with flesh terrors red paint it on leave it and then it's finished i don't touch it after that so another part of the model where you're just painting it leaving it and it's done so this is the the speed of contrast here so i go black templar first medium kind of brush with a good tip on it and i'm going to quite generously apply this but neatly paint it into places where it's meant to go something like that if you can see it I'll do the other side I have to move quite quick here because we'll be blending just doing the neat work at the top first gonna run the black Templar about two-thirds of the way down towards the tip just making sure I get all this bit right first okay so black Templars down there okay then wash out the brush, take away the excess water. Flesh tear is red here at the tip. And then add, merge the two together by just brush strokes down the way. And it's the flesh tear is red starts to show through on the black so you're trying to go red at the tip and then black at the top and then a, a merging of the two colors in between they do flow into each other really nice they mix really well and they keep their intensity as well that's it's nicely gone to the uh, what really is just a slightly shaded white background bony background and you've got nice color intensity going on there so brilliant job flesh terrace red's got brilliant pigment to it and so too has black templar it's pretty good Flesh Terror's Red is very strong. So I'll do the other claw here. Again, doing the neat part first, working it right up to the, the very top of the claw. Coming about two thirds of the way down. Going to the other side, doing my neat work first. And then just flooding it on, just a generous amount of this. Wash the brush out. Take away the excess water. Flesh tear is red. Just work that into the tip of the claw. And then merge the two together with brush strokes. Trying to preserve the very tip, tip as flesh tear is red in between emerging the two colours. 
and that will start to self shade self highlight itself as that contrast starts to settle down you do get a subtle kind of highlight of that happens only brush work as uh, extra on top of that so those claws look nice a little bit of ed, ed red to it just gives that more insectoid sharp kind of look so that's that finished so really we're looking about two thirds of the way done if not more three quarters it may not look it too much it doesn't look it doesn't have that iconic high fleet leviathan yet that's because we're missing the purple so we're going to do that next shyish purple I'm going to show you a process uh, of using those contrasts. I've tried different approaches. I've tried contrast and then going for like the classic method, highlight edge, high hi edge highlighting. It looks terrible, and I know others have struggled with it as well. Uh, just the way that contrast works, it just the classic method. You're painting like a solid block, and then you get nice, neat lines for highlighting. But with contrast, it's sort of self-highlighting itself, and you're competing with that, and it's it's proved to be very, very difficult, tedious. It doesn't look very nice at all. Um, but then you still want some kind of edge highlighting going on. So I'm going to try and answer that, help you with that with shyish uh, purple here. Show you a process where you can get some edge highlighting done uh, exclusively by just using the contrast paint with no further help. So it's going to save you time. It's a faster process and it looks nice and tidy as well. Uh, as seen on uh, the model here. So if you see the edge highlighting all done, I didn't paint that as such. Uh, that's part of the process as you'll see but we'll explain it as we go along uh, wait for this to dry and then we'll go on to the shyish purple all right so everything's dry on here we're going to go on to the shyish purple we're really going to turn this into a high fleet leviathan model and so with this one we're going to put one regular coat on not too thick not too thin just a regular generous coat across all of the armored plating uh, on the model then when that dries entirely uh, it will then fill in the recesses and shadowy areas with a second coat and that'll make the whole thing look a lot more solid but you'll not coat over uh, your thin edges and leave those uh, with the original color so if i illustrate it for you on the carnifex so it's covered there in that tutorial so it will go over uh, in one thin coat and it'll be the lighter purple then we'll do a second coat and fill in all the, the recesses believe the edges of the lighter purple and you'll get that effect so i haven't actually had to paint any of those highlights they're just uh, they've just been left exposed after I've done uh, the second coat. So you're just applying two layers of contrast, controlling the contrast, and then just getting the effect without having to do loads of uh, lines and so on, and highlights. So it's tricky enough where to start. We'll go with the tail and the plating that runs all the way along uh, the tail here. So this I want to do a generous enough coat. I want to take a fine enough brush and paint very very carefully so that I'm not you can see it there just going around all the edges of the, the plate now this has already been shaded with the velopus pink so you can see where to go and just paint that nice and tidy there and the wings in the way that you can see it going on so we're really starting to turn this into a high fleet leviathan model there's no real special technique required here just painting on neatly Brush strokes, I would say, when you need them, like on the larger pieces of carapace here, just going down the way. So you might want to fill it all in and then just finish with some brush strokes going down the way. I don't want to stop here. As I said, contrast can dry quite quick, so I just want to keep this flowing continuously and do this all in one hit. But I'm going to go over the rest of the model. It's so all the armor plating areas. that's on top of the head here, the back plates, uh, the fires, the shins. There's, plate, there's armor plating down there as well. So I'll cover all of that in one add a simple coat of this shyish purple so that's drying off the second coat is i'm filling in the recesses with the shyish pur purple uh, just to tidy things up when contrast dries it can go quite kind of muddy looking and lose its definition to some degree so i'm just going to fill in the shadows so for example the armor plating here on the back uh, is just tucked in here running along here and then going underneath with a second coat but leaving the edge lighter and not touching it i'm just going to work my way down that'll darken and make the contrast go nice and solid in those areas that you put a second coat on and the areas that you leave will stay lighter so they could be like your highlights uh, for the armor and in effect what you're doing is you're not doing any highlighting work and fine brush work uh, you're just filling in the shadows with an extra coat uh, of contrast paint that seems to work really well I'm happy enough with how it's turned out. Maybe if I can show you on another model. 
you can see it on this psychophage model here. There's just a gentle light edge left on the edges here of the model. And that's not been painted, that's just been left uh, as I've filled in the recesses with a second coat of shyish purple. So I'm gonna go over the rest of the model, do that second coat, finer brush, working my way in, leaving the edges exposed uh, to give that natural kind of highlight. So I'll go across the rest of the model with that. So I'm hoping you can see that on the model. That's the second uh, coat done for the shyish pur purple. And hopefully you can see that it's tidied up the contrast, but has left a, a highlight there for you. You can see on his left hand leg, this leg across here, there's a highlight on the chest. And then if I catch the light here, you can see it now on the carapace somewhere there on the back and on the horn, just directing the paint into the recesses and shadows, but leaving the extreme highlights exposed of that lighter color underneath. That's the idea. I've done that across the model. He's virtually finished now. So I've talked about enhanced contrast. So when you put contrast paint on the model, uh, yes, it shades, uh, but it doesn't leave like for the, the bone across here, you still get a pink tone across the whole thing. So you can take, I'd recommend you do this, take the wraith bone and then repaint just the top highlight edges uh, on that uh, regular flesh uh, across here and that'll just lift it. I've been working on this wing already. So maybe you can see it. That's This wing's not been redone and this one I've gone over it again just picking out the extreme edges and it just lifts it and tidies it up so for example if you see the tail here this pink running all the way through uh, i'll go back over this area across here just gently with the wraith bone just to clean it up and tidy it up it will sharpen all your edges for you uh, you can also use that paint very carefully to pick out the teeth individually just to make them stick out a bit more and sharpen them up around the mouth and all the sinews and expression on the face just a sharp brush just pick out and sharpen up all the detail in there as well so it's worth doing uh, I'm going to run that across the model and that just enhances, just helps the whole thing just pop a bit more and makes it a bit more tidy. But this thing's virtually finished. I think he looks pretty good perched up on his rock. And imagine him with a swarm of gargoyles around him, I think it'll look pretty good on the table. This model's virtually finished. This option, this approach is optional. You, I, I would highly recommend it. Um, perhaps a bigger model will illustrate it better. So I went over this and just re-picked out the wraith bone and then left all the, the nice pink where it's flown into all the recesses and it's tidied it up and just has really picked that out so you can see it on that model there you get a really nice uh, shading going on with that and it just lifts the whole thing when you lighten this and make this sharper and tidy it, it emphasizes the rest of the model as well including all the purple armor so I'll go around this one uh, tidy him up with the wraith bone and then it should be finished all right so that's that model finished I've gone around and picked out all the wraith bone sharpened it up it really does help with things like the face I picked out the teeth and then hopefully you see a nice close-up view of this thing i've then gone on to do the flock for the basing and again check out the tutorial there for the screamer killer i cover exactly how to do the basing uh, here for this color scheme but there he is i like him perched up a bit higher i think it really emphasizes the model and if he is to join another unit it means he'll be head and shoulders uh, above them that's the plan uh, with him, but with a limited number of colors, what is seven colors we used? We've managed to create this. Um, hardly any highlighting going on. We've just taken contrast, but 90% of this is just contrast paint applied and left as it is. Uh, a cheeky double layer of shyish purple to create all our effect without having to paint any edge highlights at all. Uh, and then just to sharpen the whole thing up, just taking the wraith bone and going over the top of the flesh, the teeth, and so on, just to pick that out. But uh, everything else is contrast, and that's the result. Uh, that you see. So by all means copy this tutorial. Do check out the other tutorial on the channel as well uh, for the Screamer Killer. There may be other tutorials, not sure, see how it goes uh, here, but the idea is to give you a guide uh, for painting these models and really contrast has opened the way up to paint up High Fleet Leviathan models uh, nice and quickly with some great effects. So there it is. Uh, keep a look out for more content on the channel. For Discount 40k do check out the link below for the outpost. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.